non-acute angles. In this lesson, you will learn how to use reference angles, how to find the function values using reference angles, and how to evaluate an expression with function values. So let's look at what reference angles are. In the first quadrant, we don't really need reference angles because your angle is theta, and so your reference angle is theta prime, so theta prime equals theta. It's just the same thing. So we don't really need reference angles for quadrant one. Again, that's quadrant one. So then for quadrant two, theta is this angle. So the reference angle is how many degrees it would take the ray to get back down to the x-axis. So here's your theta prime, that's your reference angle, and we find theta prime by taking 180 and subtracting theta from it. Now in the third quadrant, our theta, our angle measure, is from the x-axis going counterclockwise to the ray, so there's theta, and so theta prime, or the reference angle, would be this angle here. Your reference angle is always an acute angle. So in order to get this measure, you can take theta and subtract the 180 degrees, and the rest of it's going to be theta prime, or the reference angle. So we take theta and subtract 180 degrees. Okay, and then you're gonna take um, you're going to go into the fourth quadrant. Again, this was the third quadrant. So now we're going to do the fourth quadrant. And our angle measure comes all the way here to the fourth quadrant. And if we continued going up to the x-axis, that would give you theta prime. Remember, this was theta. So in order to get the value of theta prime using theta, we would take our whole circle and subtract theta from it. So 360 degrees, that's a whole rotation, minus this piece of that whole rotation. And that gives you the reference angle in the fourth quadrant. So using that information, using reference angles, let's take a look and see how we can find the values of the trig functions. Okay, so this is 220 or 10 degrees. Remember, we're in the third quadrant, so we want to take theta prime is going to equal 210 minus 180, and that gives us 30 degrees. So this angle right here is 30 degrees. So if we make our right triangle, this has to be 60. And remember, in our typical 30, 60, 90, across from the 30 degree angle is a 1, but we're in the third quadrant, so it's negative. And then across from the 60 degree angle is a square root of 3, but because we're in the third quadrant, it's negative, and the hypotenuse is 2. So now we can do our trig functions. So the sine of 210 degrees is negative 1 over 2, that's a negative there. Uh, the cosine, ooh, sine, of 210 degrees is negative square root of 3 over 2. The tangent of 210 degrees is going to be negative 1 over negative square root of 3. When we rationalize, we get the square root of 3 over 3. That's a 3. It's a very ugly 3, but it's a 3. Um, and then, so our cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so we're going to get negative 2. Our secant of 210 is the reciprocal of cosine, so it's negative 2 over the square root of 3. When we rationalize, we get negative 2 square
square root of 3 over 3. And then our cotangent, I apologize that my pen is really not working very well. I thought I had it fixed and apparently not. Um, so then the cotangent is a reciprocal of tangent, so that's going to be square root of 3. All right. Now let's evaluate cosine of 120 degrees. Oops. Cosine. All right. Mm. Let's evaluate cosine of 120 degrees plus 2 times the sine squared of 60 degrees minus tangent squared of 30 degrees. All right. So our cosine of 120 degrees is the same thing. Well, let's draw the picture. 120 degrees is in the second quadrant. So this is 120 degrees. So that makes our reference angle 60 degrees. And remember that cosine of 60 degrees is equal to 1 half. But remember, maybe this will help. So this is square root of 3, negative 1, and 2. But remember, we're in the second quadrant, so our x value is negative. So, and our sine value is going to be square root of 3 over 2. So sine of 60 is the square root of 3 over 2. And then tangent is y over x, but this is 30 degrees, so everything's positive. So tangent of 30 is 1 over the square root of 3, which is square root of 3 over 3. So now we have negative 1 half, because we've replaced the cosine of 120, plus 2, and then the sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2, but that was being squared. And then the tangent of 30 was the square root of 3 over 3, and again that was being squared. So now it's just a matter of simplifying. So we have negative 1 half plus 2 times 3 fourths, so when you square this you get 3 fourths, minus 3 ninths when we square that we get 3 ninths. Alright, so now we have negative 1 half plus, and when we simplify this we get 3 halves minus, simplify that, we get 1 third. Then when we add these two together it's really just 1 minus 1 third, which is equal to 2 thirds. Alright, let's evaluate each function. So we want to find the reference angle, a co I'm sorry, a coterminal angle for 780 degrees. So if we take two full rotations out of that, we get cosine of 60 degrees. So let's take a look at what that drawing looks like. So here's your 60 degree angle. You can make that a right triangle. And remember across from the 60 degree angle is always the square root of 3 and then the short leg is going to be a 1 and the hypotenuse is 2. So the cosine is the x over the r. So the x value is 1 and the r value is 2. Now let's look at the tangent of negative 405. We're going to add 360 because we want to find a coterminal angle and that gives us tangent of negative 45 degrees. Well, that's pretty simple in giving us a reference angle because negative 45 degrees just means you start at 0 degrees and go 45 degrees clockwise. So we're going to be in the fourth quadrant here. So when we draw the picture, we get 45 degrees, and then we can make our triangle. And remember that it's an equilateral right triangle, which means that each side is 1, but because we're in the fourth quadrant, the y value is negative 1, and then the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So the tangent of negative 45 is going to be negative 1 over 1, which is equal to negative 1. All right, let's take a look at this problem. Find all values of theta if theta is in the interval, and that should say is, is in the interval 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Now keep in mind that this bracket is inclusive. It's like a closed dot. It includes the 0. That's inclusive. But the parenthesis is open. It means that it goes up to 360 but does not include 360. So the bracket is inclusive. The parenthesis is not. <coughs> so now, since we're looking at all four quadrants, since we're going from 0 to 360, which quadrants is cosine negative? Remember that cosine is x over r. So where are the x values negative? Well, we know that we're, if they're negative in the second quadrant and they're negative in the third quadrant. So those are the two angles we're going to look at. So theta is the amount of rotation from zero degrees to the ray. So these two angles give us negative square root of two over two. Well, let's draw our reference angles. So here's a reference angle, and there's your theta prime, and here's a reference angle. So this is your theta prime, right there. Okay, so here, all right, let's label our values that we know. So we get negative square root of 2 for the x's, and we have 2 for the, y, or the r values, the hypotenuse. So let's see what our, uh, what our y value is. So we have negative square root of 2 quantity squared plus y squared equals 2 squared. So that gives you 2 plus y squared equals 4. That's a 4, not a y. Um, so y squared equals 2. So y equals the square root of 2. All right, so that's the square root of 2. And this one's going to be negative square root of 2 since we're in the third quadrant. Well, what do you notice about your x and y? They're the, the absolute values are the same. So that makes this 45 degrees. So in the second quadrant, if your theta prime is 45 degrees and we want to find theta, we take 180 and subtract 45 degrees and we get 135 degrees. So there is our first value for theta. And then the second one, remember to find this reference angle, remember it was 45 degrees, so in order to find theta, we take whatever the straight line is, which was 180 degrees, and this time we're going to add the 45 degrees, because not only did it go to the 180 degrees, but it kept going 45 more degrees. So our answer is 225 degrees. So the two answers that satisfy cosine theta is equal to negative square root of 2 over 2 are 135 degrees and 225 degrees because we had to stay within 0 degrees and 360 degrees.